Every time I get the itch to refresh our home decor, I always hop in the car and head to the thrift store because I know I'm gonna find beautiful and unique pieces all without breaking the bank. Now, up until a few years ago, I was not a huge fan of thrifting, but I have changed my tune. And today I'm gonna share with you all of my simple but super effective hacks to help you score every single time you step in a thrift store. You're watching Whiskey and Wit. My name is Whitney and a huge thank you to Home Aglow for sponsoring today's video. Also a huge thank you to my Whiskey Craft Buddies who are here each and every week to DIY with me. I've got 15 hacks for you today to help you score each and every time you head into a secondhand store. But the first hack today we are gonna talk about is actually before you get to the store. And that is my one in, one out rule. I recommend walking around your house and finding some items to fill a bag or a box to take to donate when you are thrift shopping. That way you take those items, you can donate them, it can be somebody else's treasure, but then also you are clearing space for the new finds that you are gonna find that day at the thrift store. So you might not be finding that amazing gem because your house is already too cluttered. It's also worth mentioning when we're talking about donations, not everything has to be donated to a Goodwill or a Salvation Army donation center. I have found lately that it is much better on my end to find local places I can donate to, like women's shelters, senior centers, churches, also schools with extra craft supplies. So just do a quick Google search or look in your local Facebook group to see if there's any groups in need of the items you wanna donate. Wit tip number two, the type of store that you're shopping at as well as its location really, really matter. So first, you need to know the difference between a thrift store and an antique store. And sometimes you can find like a hybrid, but most of the time it's one or the other. Thrift stores are like Goodwill, Salvation Army, Savers, or local thrift stores that offer a variety of those secondhand items, generally at low prices. Though the cost can vary, so don't come in the comments and tell me your Goodwill is super expensive. If yours is, you can Google to find a cheaper thrift store around you. And antique stores, on the other hand, are gonna provide you a curated selection at a higher price due to the fact that the owner of that store is curating the items ahead of time, so you're paying for that. Now, both options have their fines to be had, but don't expect those thrift store bargains at an antique shop. And if you do, that will cause a huge frustration with thrifting. So make sure you are at a true thrift store if you're looking for those bargains. And you also know how the saying goes, location, location, location. Affluent areas tend to have more fines because folks with more money tend to turn over those items more quickly. So think clothes, furniture, home decor, they can afford to do that. So that is where you can truly score. I recently went to an affluent suburb of Chicago to thrift and I found this on-trend Rachel Zoe blanket for just a couple of bucks. It looks identical to this high-end one that they're selling online for $100 plus. Such a score. So maybe you aren't scoring because you're in the wrong area or at the wrong type of resale shop. So just some food for thought. Hack number three, start in an area of the store where you can score because that sets the vibe for your entire trip or even your whole day if you're making a day of thrifting. Those areas for me are baskets and vases and glassware because I'm always looking for those and I can usually get lucky. I found this beautiful ceramic jug for a boho bridal shower we're throwing for my cousin and that made me even more hopeful and positive for the rest of my trip. Two big tips when it comes to baskets. One, make sure that you are doing the quality control check because they're not doing it for you. This basket I loved but I flipped it around and it was a little beat up so keep that in mind. And also you can use them for way more things than just organization. I needed a new trash can in our front room, so I found this basket for a couple bucks, cleaned it up, and added a little bag inside so it could function as a trash can, but you don't see the bag, so it just looks like a pretty basket in our front room. Another area that I've been loving to thrift in lately are the scarves because they make great staging and decor pieces without all the bulk and weight of blankets. I drape them on chairs, I lay them over the edge of baskets, and I even put them on my blanket ladder for seasonal color and texture without needing like multiple $30 blankets to do that. These were just a few dollars and they're super easy to store when you're not using them as well. I also love finding containers that I can fill with faux foliage, especially in the spring like this ceramic teapot or this woven textured planter. Both of these were in the vase aisle and I love how they are the perfect vessel for my faux tulips. Quick and easy, but it adds so much to a setup for just a few bucks. And remember, you're not just looking for turnkey pieces and that leads me to hack number four. Don't forget you can always DIY. I've made over a ton of items over the years to get the look and feel I've wanted like this black pitcher. I used my faux texture treatment with some plaster of Paris and then I covered it with black paint. 
I added these Hobby Lobby faux florals in my living room and it looks so modern rustic slash modern organic without having to spend a ton of money at stores like Pottery Barn or West Elm. Because the picture itself was not super trendy before, I bought it for a lot cheaper and with a little DIY, it's good to go. Think beyond the color in the store because you can always change the color, you can even change the texture. So if you've got a shape that you love, grab it, bring it home, and you can always DIY it to fit in your home quickly and easily. And if you're not even sure where to start, don't worry, I've got a ton of videos showing you how you can DIY with common thrifted items, like candlesticks. I've made mine over into both black matte options as well as faux brass options that would be great for events and weddings or a great addition to a console table at your house. Mirrors are also a great thing to buy secondhand. I found this one and I shared it in my Pottery Barn inspired DIY video and it was so awesome because all I had to do was add a little bit of Easy Off oven cleaner on it, make sure you're doing it outside, but I let it sit in the sun and then I scrubbed it off a couple times and the orangey tone totally came out. And once I was done, I had this beautiful raw wood mirror, which I really love, and I would have paid way more money for it at a boutique or high-end store. Another option is to create a front face for your mirror, and in that same video, I created this box, distressed it, and was able to get a Pottery Barn lookalike for 30 bucks versus $500. That includes the wood as well as the mirror that I got from the thrift store. I'll show you step-by-step -step how to do it. You can find that video up in the iCards or down in the description. One of the biggest apprehensions I hear about buying secondhand or pre-owned things is that somebody else has owned it and how do you know that it's clean? Well, you don't, but there are a lot of easy ways that you can clean it yourself to make sure that your items are good to go, you can bring it into your home that it is nice and clean, and then you can still benefit from the secondhand price. I like to clean my baskets one of two ways. The first is with warm soapy water and don't leave them in there for too long because it can warp the shape of the basket weaving. Once it's clean, let it air dry and it's ready to go. Now for the second one, this picnic basket I found last year was way bigger than my sink, so I couldn't do the first one. So instead I took it outside and gave it a really good spray with this Lysol disinfectant aerosol spray. I love that it's aerosol because it doesn't drench the material and ruin it, but it does kill all of those germs just like I want it. For things like artwork and picture frames, I use the Lysol spray and then remove the glass and use a Windex spray. And for soft goods like clothes, blankets, scarves, etc., I use this Lysol laundry sanitizer and it is seriously a game changer. It kills all the germs without any bleach so you get everything clean and it smells really good too. It's also great for smelly clothes and other germy messes you need to launder so I like having it in my laundry room. Now I typically steer clear of things like stuffed animals and pillows that don't have removable covers and inserts because they are really hard to know that they're clean. All other hard surfaces either get cleaned with Lysol spray or warm soapy water. And sometimes you have to take it case by case, but don't let the fear of getting something clean keep you from getting the deal, especially if it can easily be done with either the laundry sanitizer or the disinfecting sprays I shared today. So I might be a pro at cleaning my thrift finds, but with a busy schedule juggling my business and my family, keeping up with cleaning my house can feel so overwhelming, especially right now because there is a big push for spring cleaning and also events coming up like Finn's birthday party that we just hosted and I was really stressed out. So to help, I used Homaglow, which is a five-star cleaning service that helped take that off my plate so I could focus more on what I love about hosting parties, which is planning and DIYing. Homaglow makes finding and booking someone to help with cleaning easy and affordable. On their site, you'll select your preferred date, cleaning type, and your duration. Whether you need a quick clean later this week, a scheduled one for an event like I did for Finn's party, or you want to do ongoing regular cleanings, they've got you covered. The sense of relief I felt after the cleaning was completed was awesome, and then I was left to do what I do best, which was decorating for the party. As somebody who has never hired a cleaner before, I really appreciated being able to go through photos and reviews of background checked and top rated cleaners on their platform because it gave me peace of mind knowing we were welcoming somebody trustworthy into our house, which was a concern of mine. Whenever I try a new service, I love to see that they have a happiness guarantee, which Homeglow does. And I also love it's a great way to support local businesses because the full cleaning fee as well as the tip goes directly to that local cleaner. So whether it's for a party, special occasion, or for help with spring cleaning, take 
take home cleaning off your plate this spring by using Homaglow. Head to homaglow.com slash wit or scan this QR code to get your first three hours of cleaning with Homaglow this spring for only $19. My next hack is go in with a plan and know your style slash what you need. I am a sucker for a good deal and that has led me in the past to turn my house into an island of misfit thrift items and that causes overwhelm and it turned me off from thrifting for a while. So instead, now I have a running list of materials and items I know that I can always work into my decor like wood, brass, terracotta, amber glass, and vintage books. Now maybe those aren't your vibes, so you're going to want to think about what works for you and your home. So maybe it's coastal items, maybe it's wicker, maybe bling or crystals. Think about what is in your home right now, or maybe what you hope will be in your home in the future if you are going through a transition, and stick those items on your list so when you are in the thrift store looking, it is right there to reference and it's in the back of your mind. Up next, you're going to go with an open mind and you are going to be patient. Also, this might be a hot take, but don't expect to buy anything when you go thrifting. Honestly, the days that I am the most disappointed with thrifting, it's because I was expecting too much. Thrifting is an adventure and sometimes you strike gold and other times you come up empty handed and it's all part of the process and the journey. By packing your patience, I mean this. You typically see a ton of my awesome finds like today's video, which is really a highlight reel of what I've found in the past so I can give you visual aids of what I'm sharing, but sometimes I walk out of the thrift store empty handed. And if you go in thinking, we'll see how this goes, it's a much more enjoyable experience than having a list and being bummed you didn't find everything on it. Hack number eight, always grab a cart. I like to use it as purgatory for items that I'm not 100% sure of, and I know there are people on both sides of this, but I say if you are undecided about an item, toss it in your cart. You can always put it back later, but if you leave it and come back, somebody's probably going to snatch it up while you're deciding, and then you're out of luck. So put it in the cart. It's kind of like your purgatory versus thinking about it on the shelf, and I've found this to be extremely helpful as of late because thrifting seems to be gaining popularity, which is awesome, but the more people that are looking for similar pieces of decor, you might snooze and then lose on that item. So just add it to the cart to save your peace of mind. Hack number nine, I am calling take note because you want to have a list and you don't want to go in blind. I like to start by looking at high-end sites before I go thrifting like Pottery Barn, West Elm, Kirkland's, and I also like to have an ongoing Pinterest board of inspiration. If you don't know what types of items are going to work for the vibe you're going for, you will 1000% walk right past them every single time. But if you set yourself up, you will find what you are hoping to find because it's on your mind. I love to have a ongoing note on my notes app on my phone so that when I see something I want or have an inspiration photo, I just type it in my notes app or even put a picture in there. And that way I can reference it in store and not forget to look while I'm shopping. There are a couple areas of the thrift store that I know you are 1000% walking right by. And if we have similar taste, you're going to want to check it out because I have found some true gems. One being the book section. I love to grab hardcover ones with spine colors that fit my neutral decor palette. And I also have found at a local thrift store, they now have a vintage yearbook section. And I love those because the spines are so pretty. A lot of them don't have words. And even if they do have words that you don't want to display, just flip it around and show the pages instead. I also love to check the record section and sheet music because they're great for DIYs and I have found some great records for my record player that I love to just use instead of decorate with. Another area is craft blanks. Be sure to look at the frames and the signs. Not only can you sand them down and add a new decal to it, but photo frames are also amazing to grab secondhand because you can get really great pieces that have a lot of character for a lot less. Also, if you can find photos with mats in them, it makes it a lot easier because you don't have to have the exact size of art and it's a lot cheaper than having to have something matted yourself. Also, it can be totally hit or miss, but I always like to check the faux floral section. Sometimes it's a bust, but I have found like these hydrangeas that I can cut apart from the display that it had this little container. And I've also found new with tags Kirkland's wreaths at my Goodwill store like this fall option and this everyday option. So sometimes you need to dig. Hack number 10, I always get asked when to go thrifting to score. 
I like to go during the week, like Monday through Friday, because of restocks over the weekend and overnight, but you can always ask an employee at your specific store when they restock, and I usually try to avoid weekends if at all possible, because it gets crazy, and also note if you're somewhere that has a lot of resellers, that can also get intense, so I try to go an hour after opening, because they're going to duke it out with me anyway, so I just steer clear. Number 11, know what is worth your money. I've been known to go a little hog wild, especially when prices are low, but you need to make sure you know that you're getting a good deal and you aren't left with a thrifting hangover of regret. One of my biggest things is hurricane vases. You can find super high-end ones marked down, but you can also find Dollar Tree ones. So make sure you're checking. You want the thick glass. You don't want any of the thin flimsy ones because they'll charge you three bucks when Dollar Tree's charging $1.25. Furniture and lamps are my top items that I would say are absolutely worth it every single time to go secondhand versus buying new. Seriously, lamps are so expensive if you buy them new. They're like $50 plus, and a lot of people struggle with seeing past icky shades or funky colors of lamps, but you know, honestly, you can replace a lampshade. That's never a deal breaker. I just go to Walmart or Target to get ones that are inexpensive, that are on trend. If it needs a little bit more love like this woven one did, I ended up just taping off all of the electrical and spray painting it a lighter color to match my home. It was a quick and easy weekend project and I made over this pink lamp using some plaster of Paris and some paint. It's so quick and easy to get that pottery barn look on a budget. I love finding ones I don't have to DIY though. That is just an extra bonus. I recently found this one for $14 plus the lampshade. It was under 30 bucks and I love how this looks on my thrifted console table. It just all comes full circle. I also make sure to check the lamps when I'm in the thrift store if they give me the option. Some stores will have power strips and light bulbs so you know if it's going to work or not. If it doesn't work, it's not the end of the world. It's just nice to know if it does or doesn't. But if it doesn't, you can grab some of my favorite Amazon light bulbs. I'll link them down below. They are remote operated and you don't need to plug them in. They don't need any power other than batteries to work. Hack number 12, be ready to work. You're going to squat down low. You're going to get on your tippy toes. You're also going to be sure to look under things. The workers at these stores are insanely busy and they have so much going on. So you aren't do, they aren't over there doing merchandising or making it easier for you to find anything, but it's all part of thrifting. So look up, look down, left, right, all over for those great finds. Which leads me to my next one, lucky number 13, double back, especially on the aisles that you're the most interested in. You may have things that you missed the first time, so the second time is great, or there might in fact be new items. At my stores, the employees are constantly restocking the shelves as I'm shopping, and so you might also have other people that have items in their cart that they decided to not purchase, so those are back on the shelf now too. So make sure you head back so you do not miss anything, especially if it's an area of something that's on your list that you went in for. Hack number 14 I think is so crucial and that is thrifting is a muscle. It's not something that you are born with. And what I mean by that is seeing the potential in everything. When you first start thrifting, I'm not going to kid you, there is a bit of a learning curve. You got to give yourself time to learn how to see potential in everything. You got to give yourself time to learn which stores are your favorite and which days and times work best for you. And after a few times, you're going to start to get the hang of it. Thrifting is like self-care at this point to me. I absolutely love it and I love the thrill of the hunt. I promise you, you can learn. You just have to be willing to try. One area that you need to know the right time to shop is the seasonal aisle. Right now in the spring is actually a great time to look for Christmas and fall stuff because not everybody is going to think to look for it now. I love to look for things like pumpkins that are timeless. I also love to add to my Santa mug collection. And it's also a great time that I like to stock up on things like Christmas village houses that I find now because we have started a Christmas village and buying everything new adds up way too quickly. So I like to purchase those because you can get them for a couple bucks. Always look during the off season. That is when I I find the best gems. In hack number 15, this might feel a little woo woo to some of you, but it is visualize and manifest and tell yourself what is meant for me will be. Like I mentioned before, I find it does work to keep that running list in my notes app of inspiration and what I'm looking for to keep me on task. But I also love to say right before I walk in the door, what's meant for me will be because it takes a ton of stress out of the process and you can just go see what treasures you're going to find. Also, if you're trying to furnish anything from a whole room to a whole house, you've got to remember that thrifting is a long game. 
I like to try and hit up multiple thrift stores in a day if I can to help with my odds, but just know you're not going to go in and hit the jackpot on everything you want every single time. But little by little, you can find unique curated pieces and it really helps make a house a home. I hope these hacks got you excited to head into the thrift store or back in if you have been there and been frustrated before. I know they are going to help you find unique gems that are going to really set your space apart while also saving you a ton of money. A huge thank you to Home Aglow for sponsoring this video. Be sure to head down to the description and head to homeaglow.com slash wit to get your first three hours of cleaning for only $19. And if you're interested in more thrifting content, including the DIYs, I will link those on the screen for you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!